So for the past couple of weeks, um, well, couple of sessions rather, I think it has three sessions in total. We we're looking at a concept that we've looked at prior, but not in as much detail as we did quite recently, which is um, looking at these previous days, high, previous days, story, that sort of thing. And so that does provide a lot of, I can say, a layer of probability in terms of work, the trades working out if used correctly. Okay. Now we're not only looking at, the, we're not only discussed the previous day's high and the previous day's low, previous week's high, previous week's low, but previous month's high, previous month's low, and I think previous year's high, previous year's low. So those are all areas, and obviously it needs to be adjusted to which time frame you are using. Okay, uh, it's going to be very difficult to know if you are on the one hour time frame or 30 minute time frame where the previous year's low actually is, right? But it's not going to be difficult to know where the previous day's low is or the previous day's high is as well. Okay. Now, if you go on to the monthly chart, okay, if you go on to the monthly chart, it's not that difficult to see where the previous year's low is. Okay, it's not that difficult to see the where the previous month's high is. Okay, so obviously that will be a key piece of information. Let's say the previous year's high is the previous year's low. Only if you are trading, let's say a swing trading or position trading approach. Okay. Right, guys with me. So when you're looking at the market, okay, so let's say now you have a really good understanding of um, where the liquidity actually lies. All right, so just off the previous days, high previous days, low example, because we're going to be using the one hour and 30 minute time frame, uh, sometimes a 15 minute. So just for the sake of, um, I can say scalping, we're going to be using the 30 minute as well as the one hour time frame, right, only for now. Now, as I mentioned, previous days high and previous days low is not that important or is not that good of a signal if used alone solely or now if used in conjunction with a few other things right if used in conjunction with a few other things um, that we can find on the ebook then it makes for a more compelling um, trading tool right now if you've gone through the ebook as well, I think it's at um, strategy one, you know the very next indicator that we're probably gonna be looking at in uh, Thursday's session. All right, so Thursday's session, we're gonna be looking at something that we have looked at in depth. I think there's only one session where we like went deep into the big figure or the round number. Now, the thing is, I'm not sure which one on the YouTube channel that number out of that video actually is, because I do have a few um, round number videos, but if used in conjunction with the round number, the moving average, as well as, let's say you throw in the Fibonacci, then you have a trading system that has a high probability of generating profits on a consistent basis. Okay. Because what we're trying to do is not just to get 100% um, of our positions right, right, or make money off 100% of the positions, because that is highly unlikely, okay? Although I'm pretty sure everyone would love that, but it's probably very difficult to do, um, even if you are using very wide stops and very small pay profits. <coughs> okay. So throwing in one or two of these other elements will then add some sort of layer of probability of the trade working out. 
and we'll take a look at them in the next session, right, which is going to be on Thursday. But that's going to be on the ebook itself. So for now, we'll just be using this opportunity to insert all of these indicators, right, and oscillators. Okay. I think I just deleted the module that which is uh, just for this session because I just wanted a clean chart. Okay, wait, it's fine. Okay, now all of this is in the ebook, guys, so you're not quite familiar with it, then you should find it in the ebook. No need to worry. Okay, now you see round number 10700 and round number 10750 and also round number 10800. Okay, now you can see moving average, boom, moving right below where the price is running here. So that means short term trend is actually on the upside right, because the market is moving above. 200 moving average um, and that basically tells us that the momentum is to the upside in the short term all right and then we have the previous day low right yesterday's low which is yl everyone should have this indicator installed on the mt4 platform if not go through to the telegram channel scroll back a bit i think to last week you should have that mp4 um, indicator somewhere in the telegram channel probably on thursday if you look on thursday or on friday latest that's where you should be able to find where this indicator is so just download it install it on the mp4 platform and just run it so you'll be able to see where the previous day's high previous day's low is i mean you can actually do this manually by yourself each and every single day right but this is actually really good for back testing. Right? So if you want to go back in the chart and do a bit of proper back testing, this is actually quite brilliant because you don't have to go in and manually insert all these indicators or all these um, horizontal lines from the previous day's high in the previous day's low. Okay, so <clears throat> I usually talk about four and five star trades as being trades that have, you know, four out of five of the elements that we usually look at when we are about to make a trading decision. Okay. And a two star trade would be sort of like a very low proposition because you only have two things that actually check out in terms of um, what you're looking for. All right. So let's say you want to have previous days low market going below, previous days, days low, um, bounce of a moving average, um, bounce of a big figure, and also the 50 to 62% Fibonacci retracement, right? Now, let's say, let's add on, we want to have the market, so like have a structure, right? So previous market structure, something along these lines, where we have a resistance market pushes away from it, comes in, breaks above it, you know, retests, and then moves away. So, most likely, if the market comes back down to 10700, we could see a price rejection. Okay. So, if we were to have all those factors in, then we basically have a five star type of trade. Okay. But now, if we look at where more most of uh, like what we just spoke about actually congregates is we have that 50 to 62 percent retracement okay we have the previous day's low on yesterday's low we have the moving average right so that's a three star trade right so three out of five typically we get in and have a bit of confidence in trades that actually have a three star rating to them as opposed to markets that have a two star and a one star rating to them because you only have one thing that you're actually looking at 
Okay, so here we have the Fibonacci yesterday's low as well as the moving average. So we're probably looking at a bounce off the moving average, although it hasn't happened just as yet. So the trade wouldn't have been triggered just as yet. <laughs> okay, we need to see the market pull down and form some sort of a bounce on that 200 moving average and a bounce off the previous day's low, yesterday's low. Okay. Now that would basically mean that we have some liquidity around that area. Okay, if you guys understand the concept of liquidity, very basic, very simple. It's just where there's liquidity, there is, I can say, the availability to trade. All right. So where there's liquidity, you can actually execute positions. Now, when there's increased uh, liquidity, basically means that there's higher level of trading around that price point than at other price points. Okay, now that is indicative of what a big player or for the big boys would be where the big boys would be looking to trade. So if there's a whole lot of liquidity above, let's say 10800, okay. By that I mean let's say a lot of buy stops above 1 or 800. The big money or the smart money would be looking to execute trades around that area because they have these really large um, lot sizes that they need to execute and in order for them to execute that they need a bit of liquidity. All right, they can't exactly execute let's say five, um, let's just say 20,000 lots for example, right, on let's say Euro CHF. Okay, so all these institutions combined, they want to execute 20,000 lots on the Euro CHF at a certain price point just to get out of the trade. I showed you that. And now they need to find a price point where there's actually 20,000 lots available. So where people say, all right, listen, we can basically get into this trade. All right and get out being able to execute 20,000 lots or an equivalent of 20,000 lots, All right? So that's the main thing. Now, you guys haven't understood the part of why there's liquidity below a um, support level or below the previous day's low or below, I can say, the moving average. Okay, just go on through to the ebook. All right, just check out the ebook. If you don't have it, it's on the Telegram channel. But to answer that very question is that there's a very high, I can say, people or traders or market participants are inclined to go short below yesterday's low, right? Or to go short below the 200 moving average. Okay, or to go short below a support level. Okay. Now that willingness to go short and to sell the breakout or the downside creates the liquidity that's needed for the smart money to start buying. Okay. Now we don't just want to say, okay, this is what the retail trader or whoever the quote unquote dumb money is actually doing. Therefore, we want to trade against. I mean, it's not that simple. Obviously, we don't have the type of, um, I can say, technology access that some of these bigger boys actually do. So it would be very difficult for us to want to trade exactly the way that they trade. It makes sense. Okay. Guys, let's go with me. <clears throat> okay, so with that being said, our main objective is to pick a certain price level, right? Pick a certain price level. So, in this example, we'd say, let's say, if market comes to 107.84. 
we will be looking at time right obviously stock losses let's say below swing point or and take profits above a swing point or just before swing high point rather but all of that is detailed obviously in strategy one but this is how then you place your penny order so you make actually making anticipation that if the market comes in here you already know we have a place to trade before the market reaches that level so when the market reaches that price level you've already done your analysis you've broken down the market you already know what sort of probabilities you are looking at as opposed to someone who's making a trading decision about something as important as a trade in the moment all right so you've already set your buy stop or your buy limit rather with your stop losses and take profit and that's it okay all right are you guys with me Okay, any questions guys? Okay. All right, guys, so if you don't have any questions, um, I'll be ending off tonight's session here. Okay, like I said, I mean, for the next couple of weeks, our sessions will be a bit shorter than usual. I mean, July will you know, get back at 100%. And we'll probably go the full 30, 45, probably 45 minute discipline. <coughs> Okay, but for now we'll just stick to about these 20, 25 minute sessions just till I get back on track. Okay, all right, you're welcome, Lucia. Okay, so if you missed any parts of the session, I'll end, I'll send through the link to the Telegram channel so you can re-watch that. All right, and like I said, we've just recently restarted the the live trading session in the signal group so um yeah live sessions and times will still continue okay but they'll be posted and adjusted in the whatsapp group in the telegram channel run okay so if you have any questions regarding that um you know the number that you need to send those questions to <clears throat>